Good morning, everyone. I hope you're all doing well. Um, <clears throat> I want to congratulate you on uh, making it this far through um, through the unit masters. Um, really excited to see a lot of familiar faces here, um, and and really looking forward to this conversation uh, today with Michael Healy, uh, who is a leader in the industry, uh, not just a leader, but really a, a pioneer, somebody who is uh, creating platforms, uh, new paradigms um, that we have never seen before. Um, and I'd love to just tell you a little bit more about Michael. Um, he has been in crypto and the blockchain industry since 2010 and has built several successful businesses with exits, ranging from uh, encrypted peer-to-peer -peer video conferencing technology used by millions, um, as well as growing businesses. He, he's advised and supported startups, investors, and corporates in Asia, Europe, the Middle East, and Latin America. Uh, he was a finalist of the Thiel Fellowship by Peter Thiel and awarded the silver medal in the Math Olympics. Um, he's worked with a uh, top pan-European venture capital firm, Wellington Partners, um, And he was um, he was also one of the the programmers for the WikiLeaks uh, app way back in the day when we were just getting introduced to Bitcoin. So, uh, without further ado, I would love to to introduce Michael. Cool. Thank you so much, Zach. It's a it's an honor to be here. I'm I'm really excited for the session today. Um, I I've really enjoyed the Unit Masters batch so far. I think. Um, the team has done an exceptional job in, in building such such a great program and, and really um, huge, huge regards and, and props to everyone here for, for making it thus far. Um, looking forward to cover a range of topics today. I'll start by introducing myself, talk a, a little bit about the unit network and why we believe it's so important, especially this concept of the token economy. Um, going to be talking a little bit about our technology. So some of the different features that we provide, uh, what you can use it for, some use cases, and then we can open up to to questions. So uh, please feel free to write in the chat um, any questions you have uh, during the talking session today. Then I can either answer the questions right away or towards the end of the session. So um, a little bit to begin, a, a really nice and kind introduction from Zachary earlier. Um, can, can also introduce myself. Um, so I've been in the crypto space since 2010. Um, got started working with WikiLeaks. What happened was I was building the Android application. So there was um, the, th this was an app which pe allowed people to view the documents, allowed people to stay updated. And um, around that time in 2010, the governments froze all our, our donation channels, so Visa, Mastercard, PayPal, all the different bank accounts we had, and um, and our organization really couldn't keep running. But fortunately, we were able to use this. A very new technology, Bitcoin. Um, Bitcoin was about nine cents at the time, and it allowed us to stay operational. Allowed us to receive payments from all over the world, and allowed people uh, allowed us to store value because you know governments didn't like the transparency that we were providing, um, and basically you know tried to stop our organization from running. So if you think, you know, if if you've got um, an organization which is trying to do good and it's is being stopped by um, you know, people who, who 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 didn't like it. You know, can you imagine the, the you know the the stuff like, like society, um, you know, which isn't allowed to operate from you know doing good, isn't allowed to be allowed to do good things. So you know, it's really cool technology. I pick was trying. 2015, we had the likes of of Ethereum, um, which which said, hey, you know, Bitcoin's cool, peer to peer. Um, transfer of, of value, storing value, but let's do more. Let's build, you know, a decentralized news platform. Let's build a decentralized uh, social network. And that was one. And then, you know, what we're really excited for is is the idea of the blockchain of blockchains. So things the likes of, you know, Polkadot, Cosmos, Avalanche. These are projects which basically allow you to create your own blockchain specific to individual applications. So instead of applications like uh, Ethereum. Or applications like Solana or Matic, which try to do every single thing on the blockchain. You know, we're a big fan of of blockchains which do one specific thing. We think this is the path to scalability, and we think that this is uh, what will allow a much easier 
um, platform and technology to build upon. So what makes us particularly excited about, uh, about blockchain and, and digital assets and cryptocurrencies is this idea of the token economy. So if you look at the world at the moment, there's really two sides. There's the people who, um, who own things and the people who don't own things. And the people who own things are the ones who start companies or invest in them. So those are the founders, those are the VCs, those are the angel investors, the, 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 the people who own things. And then the other side are the customers and employees. You know, if you think about the likes of, you know, Zoom, the platform we're using, or you think about, you know, the likes of Uber or Airbnb, there's a very small group of people who, who own and hold the billions of dollars of value that, you know, has been created from a technology like this or Uber or Airbnb or Instagram or Facebook. And um, it's not because these people are greedy. You know, it's not because these people say, hey, you know, I don't care about my employees. I don't care about my customers. I want to own the vast majority share. It's because, you know, the technology, the ability to distribute that value isn't there. You know, it's, it's th this concept of tokenization where, you know, if you think about something like Uber, about 2 million drivers, 100 million riders, over 100 million riders, it's not easy to distribute, you know, the 80, you know, billion dollars of value that went on the stock exchange for. But, you know, fortunately with this idea of tokenization, it's going to be so much easier for value to flow and distribute around the economy. So the same way, you know, the internet transformed access to information, the same way the mobile phone made it really easy for us to communicate and keep in touch. You know, we've got no doubt that tokenization and the token economy is going to do the same thing to value and to ownership. And we're excited for the unit network to play a huge role in bringing about this uh, transition and, and evolution and shift. So, you know, what is the unit network and how does it fit in? So we're one of the leading DAO builders and tokenization platforms. We make it really, really easy to create a coin, a token, a DAO. And, you know, you could think, hey, what could I create a DAO, token, or coin for? So you can, you can think that, you know, a token can be used for anything in society, and it will be. You know, if you go into um, one of the most uh, used platforms, CoinGecko or CoinMarketCap, you'll be able to see that there's about 12,000 coins. So I, I can share my screen and show you what it looks like. So if you share screen, you go into here. You can see CoinGecko says it's about 12,900 coins in existence, while CoinMarketCap says there's about 20,000 coins in existence at the moment. So um, th this might seem like a lot, you know, 20,000 or 12,000 coins, but it really is um, just getting started. You know, we, we imagine a society where there's, you know, 12 million or 20 million or 12 billion or 20 billion coins. You know, the idea that each one of us here will have a token and this will allow everyone else in, in, in the audience to have a vested stake and support one another. And then if you think about, you know, all the local organizations, charities, you know, businesses locally, whether it's a restaurant, you know, whether it's a startup, a digital agency, all of these will have coins and tokens, which allow everyone in society to have a, 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 an aligned and vested stake in, in each and every business and project success. So how do you create a token on the unit network? It's, it's super simple and seamless. So if you go into unit.network, you, you'll, you'll see a page like this. I'm just going to share my screen. And, and this is how easy it is to create a token or a DAO. So you give it a name, you, you give it a picture, an image, you say how many of these um, tokens exist, so the supply of it, and you give it a symbol and you create. And that's really how simple it is to create a DAO or a token or unit. We're one of the most powerful, um, you know, simple to use tokenization platforms. And um, whenever you create a token, you basically get a number of features. So I'm going to share my screen and show you what it looks like. Um, you have a number of community features. So you've got stores. This is where you can, you know, buy and sell products and services. You've got a news. Um, feature this way you can post articles you can comment it's kind of like building your own reddit or subreddit um you've got a, a contest so this is where you can give prizes you can award you know tokens let's say you want a new logo done a new video you wanted some help this way you would create a contest and say hey i'm going to give 100 people you know 10 10 10 of my personal tokens or 10 of my project tokens there's the papers feature the papers feature allows you to write publications you can think of that like wikipedia You've got the groups feature. This allows you to coordinate people, 
bring them together, get them connected. You've got a questions feature. This allows you to ask questions, kind of if you're familiar with you know, Yahoo Answers, which used to be very popular. You've got the events feature. This allows you to create, um, whether it's conference, a gathering, an online, a live event. And you've got the polls feature, very important for governance. So if you want to make decisions, let's say you have a band, you want to ask what kind of music you want created. This is how you would, you know, ask your community, ask your, um, you know, token holders how you should make a decision, how you should vote. Um, this concept of a bank is super important, allows you to see what the operating performance is for a token. The treasury tells you how much is backing up a project. So you can see here, we've got about $2.7 million of Bitcoin backing up or million dollars of ETH. You've got an exchange built in. You've got the sale rounds you can create. Uh, the info tab gives you an overview of the uh, features and information about the token. So all of this can be created when you, when you, all of this gets created when you create a token on the unit network. Um, I highly recommend everyone after this session today, you know, create a personal token. It's kind of like creating a website when the internet was started or a, you know, a social media profile. And um, you'll be really, really ahead of the curve. You know, every uh, person in the future will be saying, hey, how do I create a coin? How do I create a token? How do I create a DAO? And you know, you'll really be at the forefront here. Um, also have several of my co-founders here. Um, you've got Zach, you've got Joseph, you've got Shelton, you've got Yip, got many others here. Um, Anchor done an exceptional job. Um, Momo who's on our art team, uh, Olivia, and all of us, you know, we're working really hard on building up the base layer, which is the unit um, ecosystem, the unit token. And what we anticipate is that once we build up this unit, um, you know, infrastructure, this fundamental foundation, the next step is to build up the industries and cities. You know, these are effectively um, digital nations. You know, these are uh, ecosystems by which the token economy can thrive. So, you know, we have the likes of um, the music token, the art token, the fashion token. These are industry tokens. You know, if you think about the way society is divided at the moment, it's very much um, amongst imaginary borders and um, nations like, you know, Indonesia, you know, Malaysia, the United States, China, European Union, these are national identities. And we think a lot of these structures are going to greatly evolve this decade. You know, the likes of, you know, the fashion economy. You know, I just came this week from a very interesting experience called Burning Man. You know, this experiment, you know, where they get 80,000 people into the desert is effectively like an, an, an internet nation. You know, it, it represents a group of society you know, which are willing to live in very tough conditions for a week. And, um, you know, we think that the, these new communities, you know, will evolve society. You know, this idea that you're born with a passport and that defines who you are for your entire life. It's very difficult to change. It's very difficult to get new passports. You know, this is going to become radically different with the token economy this decade. Um, there's going to be not just 200 nations in the world. There's going to be, you know, 200,000 and 200 million nations you know, we're going to be able to create our own communities very specific to uh, what we believe in. And if we're not a fan of, of you know, certain um, ecosystems, you know, whether it's, you know, a country, you know, a community, a, um, a movement, we can easily move and change. So apart from industries, we also are building city tokens. You know, we have a thriving New York token, a London token, a Dubai token, you know, Singapore token, you know, Hong Kong token. All of these represent heavily densely um, groups of people, heavily densely populations. We, we basically thought, okay, how can we expedite and bring about this token economy forward in an accelerated manner? And we thought, okay, cities are really interesting because, you know, you might have a, um, a group like the UK, you know, the United Kingdom, um, but the people who live in London are very different from the rest of the people around the UK. Or if you think about, you know, France, you've got Paris and you've got you know, the rest of France. So we thought, okay, how can we create effectively an internet nation and a token economy for these densely populated regions? And maybe, you know, these um, city tokens can become bigger than an entire country token, you know, like the pound or the euro or the yen, you know, something like a Tokyo token could, you know, represent a, a much bigger economy. Um, so how, how do we intend on, on getting there? We basically have built an operating model which um, drives and pushes forward the shift. Um, under our growth initiatives, you know, we have um, our master's program. We're in our 10th, 11th batch at the moment. Um, the, the real mission here is to introduce people to the token economy. You know, it's um, 
it's super important that you know when this um, shift in the economy comes, you know, with the idea of tokenization, the token economy, that everyone really understands and appreciates the amount of value that um, tokens can provide, and people can leverage and help support other people in benefiting from this technology. So um, we're really excited. You know, if you think about big institutions like Harvard or Stanford or Yale or Oxford, you know, these have been around for hundreds of years and there's not been much innovation in the education system. They have been teaching, you know, topics for, you know, centuries, which, you know, might have changed slightly, but they, you know, they've been pretty standard. And, you know, what we're excited to do is starting with the master's program, prevent, uh, provide a new alternative um, education system where, you know, there isn't just a conventional, you know, get a loan, get into debt, go into go to college, go to university and pay, you know, spend a long period of time paying off that debt. You know, we're excited to see how starts with the master program, we can really educate, inform and empower people, you know, to to benefit from the token economy as well as from a new way of uh, learning and um, supporting one another, especially with the community side. Um, we also have organized a bunch of conferences. So very similar to if you're familiar with TED, you know, the unit conferences wants to provide an evolution of this, you know, where anyone can launch their local events or conference. And if anyone here would like to organize, you know, a unit conference, whether it's live or online, please feel free to reach out to one of our team members. We're excited to provide this global network, you know, of events and local community to really drive and push forward this uh, token economy. Um, we also have a university, that, um, you know, wing where we're, we're writing research reports and trying to keep people educated and informed about uh, the token economy. We we think of it like a um, similar to Wikipedia, you know, providing top quality research. If someone wanted to learn a lot about, you know, a particular crypto ecosystem or about a city's token economy, this is where the you know, university plays a role. And then we also have um, our ventures program. So if, if someone has an idea or thought or um, mission that they want to provide, they can join and apply to our, our ventures program. This is very similar to Y Combinator. So we, we plan to roll it up to a thousand, um, you know, projects every batch where, you know, we support in getting projects financed as well as successful. Um, and and we, we're really excited for this because, you know, there are a lot of projects and tokens and coins within the token economy and the blockchain sphere, but we feel as if a lot of them don't really have the substance that they really should have, the longevity, the sustainability. And we think that the Ventures program can play a really big and important role there. And then finally wrapping up is we have our news uh, wing. The news uh, unit news is focused on covering, you know, breaking news and updates, um, interviewing interesting people like all of the ones in, in the audience today who are, you know, passionate about the token economy. And we really want to interview you and learn from how what you're doing can be shared with everyone else. We can really do a good job there. Uh, we also have a the product team. The product team, uh, I'm on the product team, is working hard on, on developing our technology. Uh, the unit network is a layer one blockchain. So we, what, that, what does that mean? It basically means that, you know, the unit network is very similar to Ethereum, similar to Solana, it's similar to BNB, you know, all of these different blockchains. Though what we are focused on is, is providing, you know, a future with the token economy. Instead of, you know, something like Ethereum or BNB or Matic trying to do every, every single thing, you know, being a general purpose chain, you know, we're very focused on, on building up this token economy and people, you know, with an idea on, on, on top of this token economy are free to, you know, build on with smart contracts on the unit network um, and, and create something which really serves their needs. Um, we are also built on this technology called Substrate or Polkadot. I'll share my screen to show you what that looks like. And um, what Substrate is, is a technology which allows you to build your own blockchain. So, you know, up to this point, building a blockchain has been really, really difficult. And um, what what um, Polkadot, prov what uh, Substrate provides is a, is a way for you to build your own blockchain. It's uh, still not as easy as it should be. Um, you know, it still requires, you know, some technical know-how and knowledge. Though what it does, it provides a bunch of framework and tools um, to, to build blockchains. Um, is built in this language called Rust, R-U-S-T. And, and Substrate is a way of using this language, you know, to provide a bunch of tools to, um, to, to, to build um, a blockchain. So, you know, 
the unit network is a blockchain focus on token economy. If you have an idea of building a blockchain for fashion or for, you know, um, supply chain or for restaurants, really anything, you could use something like Substrate to build that blockchain. Um, the next phase of the unit network, once we've established a really strong, you know, secure blockchain and a thriving token economy, is we want to build a blockchain of blockchains. So what that basically means is similar to how, you know, Polkadot operates, similar to how uh, Avalanche operates, similar to how uh, Cosmos operates. Th these projects are basically blockchain, blockchains of blockchain, are, are a blockchain of blockchains. So, you know, we, we want to play this similar role where if you've got an idea for a blockchain, you can basically use the unit network to secure your blockchain and um, connect to different blockchains. Um, it might sound quite technical, but, you know, it's really, really exciting because um, when the internet started, you know, there were only a few websites, you know, when Yahoo started or eBay in the early 90s, people were like, hey, you know, why would I use the internet? You know, I'm very comfortable reading a newspaper, you know, a newspaper boy delivers it every morning. Um, I'm very comfortable um, getting mail, you know, waiting five days for the mailman. Why should I use email? Um, and then, you know, now we live in a society where almost all services are online. You know, whether it's buying something, you know, whether it's, you know, paying for utilities, whether it's, um, you know, traveling, booking flights, you no longer, you know, call your travel agent, hoping that they'll pick up within a certain time of the day. You can just go online, check different flights, you know, where you're flying to, you can learn about a place. Um, you want to study a particular topic, you don't have to pay, you know, lots and lots of money, sign up for a program. You can, you know, go on the internet. All of this knowledge is free. You've got videos, you know, watching the TV, you don't have to. You know, wait for ads and um you know pay attention to a set of time when when you know a program is, is starting and finishing you can basically go onto something like youtube and uh, watch it anytime so you know the internet has transformed the world you know the the mobile when it came out people were doubtful of its potential when instagram got bought for a billion dollars people thought hey facebook is crazy you know but now it's worth hundreds of billions of dollars and um you know social media and the mobile phone has really transformed the way people keep in touch. Um, tokens are really just at the beginning. So I highly recommend everyone here to, to not, not miss out on the potential there. Acknowledge that, you know, most coins, cryptocurrencies, and digital assets at the moment are very scammy. They're very Ponzi-ish. They, they, they need new capital to come in to pay off earlier investors or buyers, token holders, um, which doesn't have good fundamentals. But this is very similar to how the internet started. You know, this is very similar to how uh, the app started when the internet started people said hey you know it's an internet project it's an internet business you just need eyeballs you know you don't need a real business you don't need it to be sustainable people said about apps too you know you just need downloads you know when the iphone came out when the android phone came out people said you know you don't really need to build a business on an app you know it's you just need downloads and then it's worth something google will buy it from you or facebook will buy it for you for a billion dollars but then people realize you really need you know sustainability and fundamentals it's very similar uh, with cryptocurrencies and digital assets at the moment. So people think, ah, oh, you know, it's a coin. You just need lots of marketing and people to buy your coin. And then if it drops, you just need more marketing and influences. But, you know, um, we believe at Unit that uh, tokens really need operating fundamentals, meaning it needs an, a product or a service to back it, which generates, you know, revenue and profit. And all of that value goes to supporting um, the token. And, and that's what will keep, you know, our economy sustainable and prevent it from being, um, you know, looked at from society as, you know, dodgy or scammy or um, take advantage of people who are misinformed. Um, the whole industry at the moment for digital assets is about a trillion dollars. So if you go into the website I showed earlier, CoinMarketCap or CoinGecko, you'll be able to see that um, the entire crypto ecosystem is about $1.02 trillion. You can see here, uh, coin market caps is about $982 billion, you know? And if you click on this, you can see how it has changed, you know, um, at its all time high, you know, it had a $2.9 trillion market cap, according to coin market cap. And according to coin gecko, um, it had a, um, you know, $3 trillion market cap. You know, this has dropped significantly. So if you think it was at three trillion dollars, it's dropped to about one nine hundred trillion, nine hundred billion, or about one trillion. Um, that's a drop of about sixty-six percent. So if someone had about you know a hundred dollars, it's become about thirty-three dollars, which 
is is quite a big drop. You know, that's why a lot of people have looked at this industry and they're like, oh my gosh, this is terrible. You know, it's just, it's very scammy. It's you know, it's like a lost a lot of bunch of money. But you can see here, you know, in 2018 we had a similar drop. The the ecosystem was about 100 a billion, so it's about slightly smaller than what it is now. And people are celebrating. I remember, you know, 2017 Christmas or 2018 New Year's Eve. You know, people are like, oh my gosh, you know. Bitcoin is, the, you know, it's going to keep going up. It's, it's like, wow, it's $19,000. And then, you know, unfortunately, it dropped all the way down to about $200 uh, billion. So it dropped about 70%. Uh, here you can see um, it went uh, from about $800 billion down to $261 billion. And it really continued dropping. Uh, you can see in 2018, it dropped to about $194 billion. So that's about 80% drop. So that was pretty tough. I remember... Um, yeah, even dropped lower, 100 billion. So it dropped 90%. I remember uh, 2018, um, or 2019, New Year's Eve, you know, people would ask me, hey, is it a good time to buy crypto? And I'm like, hey, you know, when it was at 200 billion, I thought it was a good time. I mean, I, I said, you know, it's always a good time. You know, this industry is going to grow, you know, 100 times what it is. But then it dropped from 200 billion down to 100 billion. So it dropped another 50%. So, you know, I, I anticipate that we're, in this a similar sort of um, situation at the moment where you know digital assets are about a billion it's probably going to drop maybe another 30 percent or 50 percent um however you know if you see how high this drop how high it was here and how high the drop was you know this is going to be what this was you know so when when bitcoin you know goes up to i would say um you know hundred thousand and then a million then you know 10 million people are going to go, wow, I can't, can't, I can't believe I freaked out when it drops from, you know, 50K down to 20K. Um, this is also not investment advice. So please, um, you know, take a grain of salt. But, you know, I, I highly recommend not necessarily buying into crypto and digital assets, but really, you know, learning about it. You know, the, the unit master program wants to empower you to build on top of this uh, industry and ecosystem and think of this more as a technology rather than investment. And, um, and, and really think, okay, you know, this technology is going to be the future of society. How can I, you know, support local businesses for ex on accepting digital assets? You know, how can I educate them on, on um, how to create their own coin and token? You know, very similar to when the internet started, you know, people needed a website, you know, or when um, mobile was a thing, people needed a social media presence. You know, a lot of businesses now have uh, Instagram accounts or Twitter accounts. You know, before the smartphone, you know, it wasn't so common for your local restaurant or hairdresser or, you know, startup to have a social media account. Um, we're, we're at a similar phase now where, you know, let's say someone, your, your friend creates a token, you know, you might go, oh, why does she need a token? Or why does he need a token? You know, the same way when social media came out, you're thinking like, hey, they're not a celebrity. You know, why do they need a social media account? And now, you know, almost everybody, you know, is sharing information, uh, sharing updates through social media we really see the same thing with um with tokenization so I highly highly recommend everyone there to dive heads in and and see how you can build within the token economy but we're also heavily recruiting and, and hiring and building our team for the unit network so you know if if there's any way that we can um collaborate and work together please feel free to reach out to one of my co-founders or, or to our colleagues and team members um kabir has got a point here the crypto enthusiasts blame the centralized fiat system of currencies that the fiat currency is being overprinted if every community would mint their own token um would not overbloat the currency um would would that not overbloat the current uh, cryptocurrency ecosystem so this is a good good point a lot of people think that hey you know we shouldn't create more coins because that will create too much inflation or too much money too much um too much being minted um th this is this is a really interesting point because um, you know, a lot of coins get created and they're not backed by anything. You know, they have no underlying value. It's very hard to determine what their value is. So this is where, you know, us at the Unit Network, we've really um, dwelled and, and thought deep about how to, how to fix this. And we've come up with a system where every single coin, you know, on the Unit Network and every single coin we believe in the future, every single token, everything of value will need to be backed up by um, digital reserve assets. So what that basically means is I've, if I build, make a micro coin, you know, Zach makes a Zach coin, Joseph makes a Joe token, you know, Adder, Nola, or Sabrina, or Adriano makes, um, you know, Adriano token or Sabrina token. This needs to be backed up by, you know, digital assets like Bitcoin or Ethereum or Solana or BNB, the big reserve assets. And 
And that basically means if I make a micro coin and I've got no Bitcoin backing me up because I just created the coin, um, it means that if, if someone buys into it, it's all speculative value, like most coins at the moment. It could drop 50%, you know, it could go up, it could go down, but it's all speculation. It's all, you know, when people buy it, they know that it's all, it's like a gamble. But then when, you know, let's say the Zachary token, you know, the, the Joe token, Sabrina token, Alexandra token has, you know, some product or service backing it up, you know, whether it's, you know, art, whether it's, you know, um, hairdressing services, whether it's food, whether it's, you know, um, smoothies, whether it's, you know, a, you know, design services, that, 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 that generates, you know, uh, euros, francs, dollars, Bitcoin, Ethereum. After paying off the cost, some of that value will go into backing up um, the token. And over time, you know, if, if a, um, a, a business or something of economic value gets formed, then that's going to provide the sustainability that tokens need. So, you know, going to Kabara's point, if every community was to mint their own token, however, these communities were to generate lots of value for society, then each of these communities will be able to hold its its own value. A lot of people in the digital asset space and crypto assets, crypto space say, hey, you know, you don't need a business, you don't need a product, you know, you, you don't need fundamentals, you just need um, people to believe, you know, same way to money, you know, money's not backed by anything. You know, we believe that, you know, coins don't need to be backed up by anything. You just need to believe. But, you know, our perspective is, you know, you might be able to say that for the big reserve assets, you know, for Bitcoin, you know, for Ethereum, for Solana, for BNB, for um, even unit, you know, we think we need to be backed up by our exchange fees. Um, however, you know, the big, big ones, you know, you might be able to use that argument because people are going to use as reserve asset. Basically, people are going to hold on to it. And if everyone's holding on to it, because they need to hold on to it to back up their own digital token. That's what can give those value. But for, you know, the millions and, and billions of other tokens um, that get created, we, we believe that it needs to be backed up by these 12 reserve assets. And, you know, some people might say, I only believe in using Bitcoin as a reserve asset. You know, Ethereum is too centralized, you know, or um, I don't like BNB because of the potential risk um, or Solana because the network goes down. So they might only say, I'm only going to use a unit or Bitcoin as a reserve asset or Ethereum because they believe Ethereum is the evolution of Bitcoin. Uh, it's really up for people to to determine and decide what reserve assets they want. And, you know, our our role as, as the unit network is to provide this sound infrastructure for people to to build interesting products and ecosystems and, and for them to thrive. A uh, great question from Eric. What is the minimum percentage of the total tokens created to back up every token created on the unit network? Um, good question. So Eric is basically saying how many you know, Bitcoin, how many Ethereum should I use to back up my token? So at the beginning, when you create a coin, it's not backed up by anything. And, you know, someone might hear that, hey, it, you know, it's a startup, it's a project. They're going to um, sell some of their tokens to raise some capital. And they're going to use that capital to grow their, their project or business um, and not fill up their treasury. But then eventually people are going to say, hey, you know, we, we would like for it to be backed up. Otherwise, the value of the token economy will not grow. So really there is no fixed uh, percentage though i guess the more value that grows into the treasury the more secure and um backed up by fundamentals that token has you know so if let's say i've i've 100 i created 100 micro tokens and i've got zero dollars worth of bitcoin ethereum unit backing it up you know it's it's, it's 100 percent speculative value so if you bought it for a dollar you know it could drop to 10 cents to five cents to one cent to, to zero basically because it's nothing backing up but if i put a hundred dollars worth of bitcoin backing up um you know the michael token there's 100 michael tokens then it's got a floor value of a dollar meaning it's backed up by a dollar even if it went to a hundred dollars it went to two dollars um it will it, it won't drop below a dollar because people can see that there's you know a hundred dollars backing up the 100 micro tokens so giving a floor price of a dollar um fun fun show has a question here what is the total value locked on the unit network token so we have about 15 uh 16 million dollars that has been deposited onto unit network uh, we expect this to grow to about 100 million dollars in the coming two to three months we're doing a major um push in terms of building up liquidity and, and value onto the unit network. Um, and then, you know, we expect to cross maybe a billion, $2 billion uh, by Q1, Q2 next year. Um, the reason why it's so important to bring liquidity and value onto the unit network um, or to any network in general is because you can think of it like a, um, like a, um, you know, a plant, you know, it needs nutrients, it needs good soil, 
otherwise it's very tough to grow the plant um similar to if you move to a an, an island and you know nobody's got any money on the island even if you create a really successful business you know whether it's a restaurant or whether it's you know a um you know a you know, um a disco or a you know any sort of business if nobody has any money on the island you know or in the town you know you might have a really good product or service but there's no liquidity there's no value that can support your project business so really what we're trying to do is um build up the amount of value on the unit network and what this will do is it's going to allow different projects to get funded um hopefully ones with a lot more fundamentals meaning that if you look at something like ethereum which has been through several waves you know 2016 um you know lots of projects get in front of 2017 had the icos uh 2021 um, you know a lot of um 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 ieos initial exchange offering but a lot of these were you know very much like ponzi schemes they had no product no no business no no service and they didn't have an effective way of seeing how well something was doing so you know if more people bought the token the value of it went up if people start to sell it or getting nervous the value of it dropped you know, many projects drop 80, 90, 95%, 98%. And, you know, we think we can do things differently with the unit network. We don't believe, you know, in um, simply basing things on popularity or speculative demand. We think that it needs to be backed up by fundamentals and underlying value. And we have no doubt that, you know, the token economy is going to be, you know, bigger than the internet or bigger than the mobile phone. You know, people are doubtful on, of Amazon, you know, or Google or Microsoft. And now, these are the biggest companies and organizations in the world. Same with mobile, people kind of wrote it off. Even Facebook, you know, they, they didn't have a mobile app at the beginning. They thought people keep using desktops. And then, you know, they, they acquired things like Instagram or WhatsApp because, you know, they want to have a strong mobile strategy. We, we see the same happening with digital assets and crypto. So people really don't see how big a potential crypto digital assets and the token economy will be. Though, you know, if you think about, you know, something like Apple, Google, Microsoft, Facebook, these are trillion dollar companies. Um, the whole digital asset space is only, you know, one trillion or less than one trillion. And we're confident that, you know, this industry and ecosystem is going to be, you know, get than all other industries put together. And we think, you know, if you think about um, industries like real estate, you know, hotels or fashion, um, these are, you know, multi trillion dollar ecosystems. All of this will move onto the token economy. You know, so the same way, you know, Amazon completely revolutionized retail, uh, something like Wikipedia, you know, changed the way people have access to information. You know, the token economy will do the same to banks. It will do the same to, you know, fundraisers like you know, private equity, venture capitalists. Um, if someone's got an idea, you know, most of the time it's very hard to raise, you know, a few thousand dollars or tens of thousands of dollars. Uh, with the token economy, it's, it's going to be much more seamless. You know, people won't have to worry about, you know, paying their rent you know, surviving on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, we, we believe that this is, is going to be solved largely in the, in the decade ahead. Um, question here from Foncho. Um, um, are the tokens being listed on, on centralized exchanges? So we believe that, I mean, we believe that we want to build up the unit network ecosystem to begin with. Um, and then over time, we will get listed on both centralized and decentralized exchanges. And, um, the big issue that we have with centralized exchanges is there is so much wash trading that goes on. So if you think about, um, you know, the likes of, you know, Binance or OKX or Coinbase, um, you know, if you go into any token or, or project, you can see that there are hundreds of um, millions or, or, you know, billions in, in 24 hour volume. That means how much gets traded on a day to day. Um, a lot of this is really wash trading. So basically what that means is people are buying, you know, uni tokens or XMR or flow tokens or algo tokens and buying it back. So as it creates that liquidity, uh, the reason why is because it doesn't cost very much to make those exchanges. So people buy and sell just to, you know, make it look like there's lots of trading um, within the unit network. Uh, we have tools in place so that, um, this wash trading doesn't occur and people can see what the real trading volume is for a token. So, you know, at the beginning, you know, people pay like millions of dollars to get listed on centralized exchanges. We think of this as a bit of a waste of, of money and energy and time. So we're waiting to get a lot of these exchanges to hold unit, to buy into our ecosystem, to believe in the token economy. And then, you know, getting listed on these exchanges will be uh, no doubt. 
a question, a point, question for Alessandro. I feel like units in the middle ground between the present sectors and what to expect for the future web two to web three. How do you cope with the breach in terms of business while it's uh, wide open? Yep. So that's a great question. So how I would uh, recommend looking at it and viewing, viewing this shift is similar to how um, the internet occurred or similar to mobile, where you think of it more like a marathon and less like a sprint where, you know, when you're running a marathon, you know, you don't think, oh my gosh, you know, I've got so many kilometers to go. You just go, cool, I've, I've, I've done this amount of kilometers. And then all of a sudden you're halfway and then three quarters and then the race is over and you're like, wow, that was, that was easy. So um, the way we like to look at the token economy is we expect, you know, tokens to be the norm by the end of this decade. So, you know, in 2022 now, by 2030, we expect tokens to play an integral piece in everyday society. And you know what happens over the next seven and a half years? You know, it might take four years for it to go incremental, incremental, incremental. In the last two years, it'll go exponential. So similar to, you know, when the smartphone came out, you know, the first two years of, of iPhone and Android's development, it, you know, it didn't move that quickly. You know, the App Store only came out, say, a year and a half after the iPhone was released. Uh, when the App Store came out, there weren't very many useful apps. You know, there was the Torchlight app. You know, there, there was, um, you know, a Fart app. There was, you know, apps apps like Uber, apps like, um, you know, Airbnb, um, you know, WhatsApp you know, maybe came out in 2012, 2013, that became when that, that, that was when it became much more useful. So about three or four years from when it was released. So, you know, we think that the unit network can really be the iPhone moment because, you know, before the, before the iPhone, there were smartphones, you know, there was Nokia, there was the Blackberry, but then the iPhone, you know, made smartphones a thing, you know, um, same with the internet, you know, before, before 2005, the internet was too slow. So if you release something like YouTube, or, you know, an internet, you know, video streaming site, um, it, you know, it was too slow. You, di you didn't have the, this thing called Ajax where people could, um, the page could ref um, refresh without, uh, you know, the page could, you know, do interesting things without uh, refreshing. Um, the technology wasn't there. So, you know, things like Polkadot or Unit, we really believe can be the catalyst towards the token economy. So, you know, my... Um, my, my thoughts to Alessandro is just take a perspective that this is the future and regardless of what people say, you know, criticize, um, disagree, you know, are skeptical, just know that, you know, tokens will play an integral piece and the, the way value and um, money flows around economy, uh, equity is distributed, will be radically changed and play a big role in that shift. Um, and then, you know, team up with other people within the unit network or, you know, use technologies like ours to see how you can best leverage that don't don't worry about building everything yourself or you know being overwhelmed by all of this new information um just realize that you know this this is going to play an integral shift um alessandro also mentioned this applies to entrepreneurship in general so entrepreneurship is seen as something very risky very difficult challenging a bumpy hill um you know we think that tokens will make it a lot smoother you know a lot of businesses fail you know 80 90 percent um you know statistically don't succeed we think that tokens will increase the likelihood of success because um you know it's going to increase the amount of people that want you to succeed you know if, if someone's an entrepreneur you know they might have some investors which are trying to push them to make money um you know it's going to be much more of a community um people won't have to worry as much when they make investments because there's much more liquidity meaning that you know if you were to invest in a company now it's very unlikely you'll see a return there uh, until you know, a big company buys it over or it goes on stock exchange, both, you know, quite um, fortunate, but, you know, highly unlikely. Um, with the token economy, things will be, will be able to be traded. So you'll be able to at least sell some of what you bought in initially. So as you recoup whatever you put in. And so you're like, okay, you put in, you know, $100 into a project, you know, at least you can sell part of what you put in back um, when it starts striving. And then that way, if it continues going up or even, you know, disappears, at least you've got what you put in back. It's super important, we feel, for the, for the token economy. Um, Eric, what are the possible incentive packages to enhance the appreciation of the value of tokens on the unit network? So this is quite a sensitive question. Um, it's it's important that, you know, we don't, um, you know, shield the unit token and we don't uh, promise and guarantee future appreciation or gain. Though I think what backs up the value of the unit token or what gives it, um, you know, what, what makes it important, we have this... Um, this thing called vaults. So when when value like Bitcoin or Ethereum or Polkadot or Solana or BNB, all these big reserve assets, we support about 15 
um, big reserve assets go onto unit network, it goes into one of these vaults. And what that basically means is that say I deposit one Bitcoin, it's going to look at all the different Bitcoin vaults, all the different people, um, you know, organizations that will hold this Bitcoin that I'm putting onto the unit network. And it's going to give it to the one which holds the most amount of unit relative to the amount of Bitcoin that it effectively has borrowed. So you can think of unit as a way of, of um, that people uh, on the unit network um, who hold a value are secure uh, and trustworthy. And you don't need to depend on a small group of people. So, you know, at the moment, you know, the crypto space and digital asset space, people think about it as being trustless or decentralized, but there are, you know, a relatively small group of people at the moment who hold a large amount of value over the industry. You know, those are the exchanges, those are the custodians, things like, you know, BitGo, Wrap Bitcoin. Um, you, you look at some like Polygon, um, there's a multi signature wallet, you know, where um, maybe like five or six people hold a lot of the value of the network. That's the big risk. You know, so within the unit network, we are able to distribute it through the vaults. Anyone here can be a vault. They just put some unit into creating a vault. And then when someone adds value to the network, they that gets uh, sent to, to, to the different vaults. Another use is uh, this thing called bond staking. So it's very similar to, you know, government bonds where you lock up about an amount of unit. And then as a re result for locking out unit, you get rewarded um, an amount of unit. Um, the rationale there is um, effectively when you 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 buy a bond or you you know put money in, in, a, in a you know savings account you get interest for it. What's what's happening here is you are um, providing value to the network, you know, by securing the network um, and also um, ensuring that this this value in the network is um, is is not spent, is not using up resources. So um, when new value gets introduced to the network, so, you know, tokens get sold um, through the unit token sale, but also rewarded, you know, to the people who, who bond stake, people who, who lock up a unit. This allows, you know, a gradual inflation. So it allows more uh, unit to be introduced to the network, but it goes to people who either buy into the unit token or goes to people who stake it. Um, other use of the unit token, are as a reserve asset. So when people, you know, someone launches, you know, a Zach token and a Lazandro token, a Sabrina token, a, you know, Joseph R Ravinder token, they can use the unit token to back up their token. So that's a way of, of seeing how well a project is doing. If someone launches a restaurant and nobody buys any food from it, they're not going to be able to, you know, buy Bitcoin or unit token to back up their token. Uh, so it's very clear that the restaurant isn't doing so well in terms of providing products and services. Um, which people want, but you know, if people you know love the product and service, they're going to have a lot of you know dollars, euros, francs, yen, which they can use to buy the assets like Bitcoin, Ethereum, DOT, uh, Unit, Solana to to put into their treasury to back it up. Um, question here from Zachary: What are some of the different ways that people listening can get involved uh, from creating a token, purchasing tokens, joining a DAO, managing a Telegram group, learning a new skill, etc.? So the best way to get involved, I think, is we have, you know, five initiatives, growth initiatives that we are pioneering. You know, we need lots of help in, in pushing this movement forward. Uh, you can think of the unit network as this new um, way for society to be released from, um, you know, the stresses of, you know, value or money, you know, which, which you know, burden and bother a lot of people in society. Um, we believe that token economy can, say, can, can solve this. So if, you know, we can work together on, on getting people to create tokens, build real businesses that provide products and services, uh, tokenize their businesses, meaning create a token for, for their project or business, um, create a token for oneself. You know, so now, you know, if someone graduates university, you know, they might be under a lot of stress because they're having to worry, how do I, you know, get a job? How do I, you know, cope, you know, the difficulties of life um, themselves individually? Uh, if they had a token, you know, their friends, their families, their, you know, schoolmates, you know, will all have a, a vested stake in their success. You know, they'll be all making sure that you know they're doing fine if they're going through a difficulty you know they can hold us and and make sure that they're well looked after so very important that we we teach and educate and, and support people uh, build lots of local communities um please feel free to reach out to, to zachary myself you know joe um, any any one of us here um question here from maxwell um we've got about eight, eight minutes left what process should one um 
who wants to create a blockchain project for an industry, for example, supply chain start first. Um, good, good question. So how do you build an industry token? So you can either reach out to our team and we can support you in building up an industry token. Um, we have a, a framework by which industry tokens are launched. Um, though if you want to build your own industry token, which is not aligned with our framework, um, then you just create on the unit network. I would suggest getting in a bunch of advisors and strategic partners, people with a bunch of, you know, reputation, credibility, know-how, knowledge in the industry, and then, you know, start uh, selling some of those tokens to provide an economic base for that ecosystem and economy to thrive, as well as providing um, an amount of, um, you know, expertise and knowledge and, and um, processes, uh, build up a team, um, launch, you know, you know, marketing sort of push a, a growth initiative pro. So, you know, we, we have conferences, ventures, masters, university news, all of this applies to each industry so that, you know, people, let's say, you know, the fashion industry, someone has got a fashion brand, they know, okay, I, I don't know anything about technology or tokens or cryptocurrency or coins. How can me as someone who loves making clothes, you know, create a coin seamlessly and then, uh, people can, um, you know, not just buy my clothes, but also feel that when they buy my tokens, this is their brand too. It's not just, you know, a brand belonging to uh, the person who started it, the founder, or the few people invested, but everybody, you know, has a best at stake. So that when you identify potential, you also get a rewarded and a remunerated for that. Um, Zach has a point here. If anyone is interested in joining a unit city group or being an ambassador, please reach out on Telegram to Zachary. Um, can also post the link. So um, this, this is uh, Zachary's Telegram. And if you've got any feedback or questions, uh, please please feel free to reach out. Um, Joe's got a great question here. What would the issue with having no unbonding period for a stake token like the unit token? What would be the issue with having no unbonding period for a stake token like the unit token? So Joe's basically saying, like, why do we have this unbonding period for the unit token? So part of the value that bonding a token provides is the stability, you know, the 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 reduced volatility. So, you know, if someone could easily bond and unbond the token, um, that, that they could, you know, bond it. And the moment they want to start selling it, they just unbond it and just dump it on the market. So you see, you know, cryptocurrencies, digital assets, they are seemingly very, very volatile at the moment. And the reason why they're very volatile is because, um, you know, people basically um, are very emotionally driven and they, they they basically see that the market's going down, so they start selling, and then they see the market's going up, and then they start buying, and they, and it rallies, and then it crashes, and it goes up and down. Um, there isn't enough stability, so you know things like uh, bonding, um, bond staking allows um, people allows an ecosystem to have less volatility. Very important though that a token can't just build up its value simply on on providing you know bond staking rewards it doesn't need underlying value so you know at the moment um if you go into the staking page on unit um there's about 38 percent apy or yield that basically means if i put you know 100 unit uh stake in a year's time i would get 138 uh unit um i, I would get 38 units so 138 unit um it's very important that this 38 percent return you know, is backed up by more than just, you know, releasing more tokens. So what backs up the unit token is, you know, the unit generates about half a percent off every trade, meaning if, you know, I, you know, was to buy Zachary's token, you know, for a hundred dollars Zachary token, 50 cents of that, you know, exchange or trade goes into unit treasury. So we expect to do a hundred million dollars in daily trading. So half a percent of a hundred million is about $500,000 um, a day. So in a year, that's about $182.5 million. And that that growth in the treasury is what's backing up the unit token. So it's not simply, you know, the use of it as, um, you know, governance or, you know, for being used in vaults or bond staking, but really the exchange fees is the real energy generator. The same way, you know, Binance or FTX or Coinbase, you know, have a tremendous amount of value from its exchanges. Um, we think we can be bigger and best in that because, you know, we're not just exchanging, you know, a few hundred tokens, um, which are, you know, very generic. Most people in the world don't know. They don't care the difference between Solana or BNB or Bitcoin or Ethereum. It's all very, you know, geeky, very nerdy, very technical. You know, what we believe is that people care about 
you know, people, you know, they care about local businesses, they care about organizations, charities, you know, causes, movement, communities, events. Um, and that's where the token economy can play a big role. So um, I guess we're, we're, we're on, on time here to wrap up. So I, I really appreciate everyone's time here. Um, and if there's any way, you know, that we can support your project, please, you know, join our upcoming conferences. We have a, a ventures program. So once you've graduated our master's program, you can join the ventures program and launch a, a token within the token economy. Um, we're looking for help with our university. So if you're excited to research, um, you don't need to know much about the token economy yet. Uh, but, you know, through our research wing, we can, you know, learn and, and collate a bunch of information to support the ecosystem. Uh, we're also looking for reporters, journalists um, to, to support our news. And yeah, please uh, be patient and excited for the um, unit token economy as well as you know the greater token economy and and try and play an integral role in it it's barely getting started so a lot of people think you know they've missed the boat on bitcoin on crypto on digital assets it really has barely started you know so um same way you know when bitcoin went from you know ten dollars to a thousand dollars down to a hundred dollars people thought oh my gosh you know it used to be 10 cents used to be a dollar it's now a hundred dollars it's too late and then now it's at you know twenty thousand people are complaining that it's too late you know, it's going to go to a million, then 10 million, then 100 million. And, you know, really try and be part of the shift. Don't necessarily just invest or put your life savings or buy into it or hope that it'll go up and, and you know, be emotionally affected by its day-to-day -day role in this, this shift. So um, as, as my co-founder Yip mentioned here, uh, she leads these are growth initiatives and integral piece of our strategy for unit. Um, we have a meetup upcoming um, in Lisbon um, on, on September 11th. Um, in Berlin, September 14th next week, Munich, September 18th, and in New York, September 24th. So please, please feel free to reach out to uh, any of these uh, meetups. We, you know, we have such a interesting community and I love, you know, meeting people within it and, and supporting and seeing how we can um, build this token economy together. It's not an individual, a small group of people's work, you know, it really requires, you know, and it, uh, lots of people who can um, push together. Uh, thank you, Kabar, for the kind words and uh, Alexandra, really great for you to be here. Thank you, Michelle. And uh, looking forward to the next master's batch and, and please uh, feel free to reach out. Thank you. Michael, I just want to say thank you so much. Uh, wealth of information. Really appreciate that you take time to point out all the different examples, uh, the different aspects, walking us through some of the new features um, and even doing some screen shares. Um, I recommend everyone, if you're not already uh, on the unit network, to, to jump on. Uh, there's an invite uh, that was posted earlier. Um, and, I, and I recommend people just kind of go on and, and just kind of look at the different things, uh, play around. <clears throat> there's, you can look at the exchanges. Um, if you just want to spend a couple dollars, you can easily go on and, you know, there's sitting industry tokens that are only one or two cents right now. Um, and just kind of introduce yourself through, through taking some actions and getting involved with the platform, as well as uh, feel free to contact me um, and I'll connect you to some of the city and industry groups, um, which is a great way to connect to your local community, um, which often have live events. Uh, they post opportunities uh, for different conferences, hackathons, et cetera. Um, and just wanna say that, that the, the second big component to the technology that we're building is the community. Um, and, and the people uh, like yourselves really do uh, create much of the value. So just thank you so much. Um, Michael, is there any last word you'd like to say? Or if not, we'll close the session for today. Awesome. Okay. Everyone have a great day. Um, tomorrow, we're going to have a demo session with Anchor, which would be awesome. There's also a Twitter session that's going to be hosted by the art uh, team, which they've posted a couple of links for. Um, so I recommend you to join that. That'll be looking at the upcoming ETH merge and how the smart contracts and transactions will affect artists um, and people in creative industries. So. Have a great day and hope to see some of you tomorrow.